Hello everybody, good evening, good morning, good afternoon, this is Dr. K again. Um, we're heading to chapter 2, Elements of High Quality Programs. For this chapter, we're going to um, talk about how we can declare using variables, what are they, what are constants, what are the different types of operations, how important modularizations are for a specific program, hierarchy charts, and what are the different features of a good program design. Now as we learn from chapter one that data items are, it includes all the text of numbers, but when we input data items to be used in a the program, they're stored in a memory um, where you could process them and convert them. And uh, for us to do that, we should be able to work with data into different types. Uh, two different types, I would say two categories pretty common would be numeric and string. So this one describes how you are going to process the data. Okay? What are the values can be held for each of that item? Let's say, for example, um, your grade. Right? Your grade can be a whole number, but for the most part, grades can be with decimal point or with a fractional part. So how do, under, how do we understand data types are, you know, what type of data we're actually expecting to process, okay? Now, as I've said, numeric constants are also important because they are going to be permanent or these are the values that does not change, okay? We're going to have an example for that. For string constants, these are alphanumeric values. It can contain both um, alphabetic characters and numbers, and they're enclosed with quotation marks. So if you want an actual, let's say, string to appear on your screen, you might want to declare that as the string constant. Now, moving forward, we're going to talk about the variables, how important they are. Um, they are named memory locations whose contents can actually vary or it can differ over time. So for example, um, for this one, I would like to use two variables in here. One is my number and the other one is my answer. Now notice that the data type for this example is called num, which means it's a whole number. Okay. Um, it depends on what book you're using, but for Joyce Farrell, she categorized whole numbers to be num as a data type. Okay. You can also use int, which stands for an integer, um, and that means that you are working with whole numbers. Now, sometimes uh, my number holds two. And it can also hold 4. At other times, my number holds 6 and my answer holds 12. So the ability of variables to change in value is what makes computers and programming worthwhile. Because when location can be used repeatedly with different values, you could actually write program instructions once and then use them for thousands of separate calculations. So that's an example on the left side here of my screen is an example of a flow chart um, working with variables. These are declarations. We're using a rectangle shape for that. And for this part, um, this is called your input and your output symbol. But for now, if let's say you're expecting to have an input, you're using that parallelogram to accept for any value. Okay? Now, for the next shape in here would be my processing symbol, which is, it can be um, any operation. Um, in this case, I'm going to multiply my number that was encoded by the user and multiply it by 2. It will be stored to the variable my answer. So this one is evaluated right to left, and we're using a rectangle shape for that. Now, lastly, on this side, I'm using an output symbol, and this one is a parallelogram, but 
now it's displaying something on the screen based from the operation that you have used um, on that operation which is multiplication so let's say I encoded two I would input that and it's saved on my number and it will be multiplied to two which gives me four and it will be stored to my answer and then end of your flow chart on the right side you can see that these are pseudocodes pseudocodes are very important because it gives you an idea um, or should I say the flow of any program um, it's English like commands which starts from start of your program and ends with stop so you can see here notice that these are how we work with variables now moving forward um, numeric variables are variables that can hold four numbers and it can perform any arithmetic operations to it and when we say strings they are a collection of characters say for example your name let's say mine is k-h-a-r-i-s so those are a collection of strings now type safety it prevents assigning values of an incorrect data type now this one you have to be very careful what type of um, data type that you're going to use for your program now understanding declarations identifier um, programming languages have rules for creating identifiers and reserve words are not allowed for that we cannot use any hyphen for the most part you you should start with a letter I recommend alphanumeric to make it a little bit descriptive you don't have to but it, it they are case sensitive as well it can be one word it can be two words and I'm going to show you how you can actually combine two words as we move forward so this one is another example I would say this is pretty much the same thing how we could de declare them and use the pseudocode to explain for the filter now let's talk about variable naming conventions we have a couple camel casing it looks like a camel there's a hump on the middle of two you know two words let's say I would like to declare hourly rate hourly wage the second word W for the wage starts with a capital letter now if you want you could also use Pascal casing which the first letter is a capital and the second one is a capital I would say this is quite harder to type so camel casing would be you know more famous for the naming conventions Hungarian notation is a form of camel casing in which uh, the data type is part of the declaration I don't normally use this one but this is another option snake casing is using an underscore um, if you're used to this naming convention uh, nothing wrong with that mixed case with underscore this is quite harder to type harder to use but it's accepted kebab case not all languages support this one because it's separated by dashes so but that's another naming convention now how do we assign values to variables okay so this is an example on how you can um, save values by using an assignment operator which is an equal sign so equal sign is an assignment operator and it operates from right to left I could also assign let's say x equals 2 where in 2 is stored to the variable x for this example that you see on my screen I'm going to multiply my number let's say 10 times 2 I would have 20 and 20 will be stored to my answer so that set command that you see here is just emphasizing that I am going to store what is the product on the right and store it on the left side so the result to the left of an assignment operator is your L value okay or should I say just the left value okay moving forward you can also initialize a string for that I could assign Hamita to your name variable I could assign 14.55 to your salary okay so variables are recommended to be declared before they are being used for the program 
to make it, you know, um, I would say less scarce for that. Now, moving forward for constants, they are um, very important because if there is a given number um, on your program, you don't want to type that over and over, okay? So what are examples of constants? Let's say discount, right? Let's say 20% discount. So this is similar to a variable, but it can be assigned a value only once, and it will never change during the execution of your entire program. So as we move forward, you can see how it's being used. I'm going to show you how to use a constant for that. Let's talk about some arithmetic operations. What are the rules of precedence? Should I say order of operation? If you can remember your PEMDAS or the acronym, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, as we actually use it, um, where parentheses would be the highest because it denotes regrouping. Exponent would be letter E, which is exponentiation. M and D, they are the same level. Um, it's evaluated um, left to right, whichever comes first. Um, and the same goes with addition and subtraction. So whichever comes first. It's the same level, so it's left to right. All right, moving forward to the next few things that I would like to um, emphasize. Let's talk about how to divide an integer by another integer. This one is a special case because um, when you divide two integers, um, it will result to any fractional part of the result and it's possible to, to lose that. The decimal portion of the result is cut off or truncated, so we're going to use a remainder operation or a remainder operator, which is called modulo operator, okay? That contains the remainder of the division operator. So let's say 24 mod 10 is 4 because when 24 is divided by 10, 4 is actually the remainder. So that's another data type for that. Okay, now going forward on the other chapters, we're going to talk about how you can modularize your program and all that. Just to give an introduction, um, it's very easy to create a program that is somehow all over the place or should I say very lengthy, you don't even know where to go back. The solution for that would be creating modules for your program or modularization. These are called subroutines, um, procedures, and functions. Um, what are the different advantages of modularization? Um, simpler code, code reuse, um, it promotes better testing as well, faster development. Suppose a programmer or a team of programmers is developing multiple programs. They discover that each of the programs performs several common tasks, such as, let's say, asking for a username and password, so displaying the current time, and so on and so forth. It doesn't make sense to write the code for this uh, task multiple times. Instead, the modules can be written for the commonly needed task, and those modules can be incorporated into each program uh, that, you know, that needs them. So, um, Also, one benefit of having a module is easier facilitation of teamwork, um, better testing, I think I mentioned that, and easier performance. So... We're going to somehow move forward to some other things that I want to remind you with when we go back to the next chapter. So for now, um, that's all it. That's the end of this video. I'll see you guys on the next one. Have a great week ahead.